The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning we hear the Beatitudes as our gospel lesson. We hear a lot of blessed are, blessed are, blessed are, blessed are. The first question that this passage always ends up bringing to my mind is, what does it mean to be blessed? What does it mean in, in our culture, what did it mean in Jesus' day even, to be considered blessed? Well, all too often in our day, and I think very much so in Jesus' day, if you were blessed by God, then you also must certainly have plenty of wealth, a big family, good health, and lots of material things. That's what being blessed meant. It was at least a showing that you were blessed, that God gave you all kinds of stuff. Is that really what being blessed is all about, though? That same word that in the Beatitudes gets translated over and over and over again as blessed, in many other places in Scripture, that same word is conveyed as happy. And I think in our translations, we don't always use happy because happy might sound a bit generic or a bit trite or even something that comes and goes depending on the day or depending on what's happening. But translating that word as happy, it's not a happiness of sunshines and rainbows. It's not just an outlook, an optimistic outlook that can go away when bad things happen. In fact, I think one of the things I love about the translation when we think about it as happy is that when you put it in this context, I think it points out how it, that happiness has to come from somewhere else, that it's not an instant happiness that fades or can be diminished in any way. It's a long-term way of living, and it's something that only comes from God. Think about it for just a minute. A few of the Beatitudes, if we use the word happy, could probably make sense. Blessed are the or pure in heart, for they will see God. Okay? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. We can be happy for those things. That's great. But there are some other things in here. Happy are the meek. Happy are the poor in spirit. Happy are the persecuted. Just like the prophets of the Old Testament who conveyed God's word and were put to death for delivering unpopular messages. Blessed are they. Happy are they. It makes no sense unless the happiness is a gift from God. Unless that gift from God isn't dependent on our current situation or place in life. My 94-year-old my grandmother, until the day that she died, would tell you how blessed she was. As her mind started to go just a little bit, sometimes she would tell you that several times in one conversation. But she was. She was blessed. She was happy. Even when at 92 she was diagnosed with breast cancer, she was happy. Even when her husband died, and she had to then move from the house they built together where they raised their kids to the smaller house at the nursing home later to assisted living, and eventually even to that place where it was just one small room of skilled nursing care. 
she was happy. She was blessed because she knew something. She knew who she was, and that gave her all the reason in the world to feel blessed, to feel happy in her life. In 1 John, that truth is stated with the phrase that we talked about with the kids this morning. Beloved, we are God's children now. Not just sometime in the future, but now. We've probably all known those people who lived life a little like my grandmother, who just always seemed to be happy. Even in the face of trials and challenges and grief, there was a certain happiness about them. People whose faith was, that was so strong that it just shone through and had an impact on the way that they lived their life, on the way that they saw life as one of God's daily blessings. We are God's children now. In the past year, we've lost 11 of God's children from our Trindle, Trindle Springs family. We've gathered at their casket. We've gathered at their graveside. We've heard the promising and the hope-filled words of Scripture. We've shared stories and memories about them. We've gathered and remembered their baptism, especially especially within the confines of our funeral liturgy. How closely our baptism is linked also with our death and the promises that come afterwards. God's claim on their lives, we remember each time we gather for those funerals. And the impact that their faith had on the way that they lived and the way that their faith impacted our lives as well. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that any of them were perfect. If you knew them, you knew that. And let's face it, even when we are at our best, even when we make as few mistakes as possible, we are not overly saintly. And yet the promise that's proclaimed at every funeral here is that we are children of God. And that means that we are saints. That identity and relationship with God is the most important thing in our world, the most important thing in our lives. And it's a gift. A gift from a loving and a persistent God. On All Saints Sunday, that, that identity that First John talks about gets a label. It gets that label of saint. But we also need to remember that it's not a matter of our own doing. It's not a matter of being perfect, perfect enough or good enough or doing enough things on our own. It's a title that God has blessed us with. And God has blessed us with that title for the living, for the here and now, not just for someday far off in heaven. The Beatitudes say, For they will be comforted, for they will inherit the earth, for they will be filled, for they will receive mercy, for they will see God, for they will be called children of God. Sometimes the Beatitudes don't do us a whole lot of favors because they make it sound like this blessing, this happiness, is something that is only accessible far off. It's only accessible after we die. It's only accessible in heaven. But as God's people, we live into the hope and the promise of the resurrection to eternal life here and now. Here and now is where we are God's children. It's what we believe. It's what we preach. It's what helps us get through the death of a loved one. Because we know that death doesn't have the final say. That God's actions in Jesus Christ on the cross, they already have the last word for us. And for the saints in this world, that is good news. And that message of, of promise and hope gives us courage to move forward in ministry, to move forward in living a life of faith, in service to God and to others. A woman in a former congregation lost her husband of over 50 years. In her grief, she, she started going to a couple of different grief groups, and she went from one to another for a while, and none of them seemed to help her. None of them seemed to focus on the hope and the promise that she really wanted them to, the faith that she needed to hear about and talk about, and she figured they all fell a little short for her, and so the same must be true for others. 
others must have that same experience. And so in her pain and in her grief, she actually started her own class. And she was wonderfully equipped and gifted to do that. It turned into a regular part of the class offerings of that particular congregation. She took the hope, the faith, the life, that those things that make us blessed and happy. And she chose to focus on that, and in doing so was able to help others in their grief. All Saints Sunday is a day with a lot of mixed emotions. We remember, we celebrate, but it also brings up times of, of sorrow and sadness, whether they're recent or whether they're 25 years in the past. Today is a day when we celebrate, and we remember the faithful saints who have led us to this point in our lives. We remember their, their faithful example for us. We might even remember growing up sitting in the pew next to them. And we strive to be that same sort of example for others in our lives. As much as we, we remember and sometimes reminisce, and the one class was talking about nostalgia earlier this morning, as much as we need to do those things and they can be helpful, it's also necessary for us to hear again that we are God's children now. We are God's saints now. And there's still work to be done, things to do, and it can't wait. The list of things that Jesus talks about with his disciples, it's, it's a tall task as you look down through the Beatitudes. To be meek, to hunger and thirst for righteousness, to be merciful, pure in heart, to be a peacemaker, to be poor in spirit and persecuted. We can't be all of those things, and frankly, some of them I'm not sure we want to be. But I think part of what Jesus is saying as we hear the Beatitudes this morning is that as we strive to live in God's kingdom, whether it's meekly, whether it's thirsting and hungering for righteousness, whether it's being merciful or a peacemaker, or whether we find ourselves persecuted or poor in spirit, as we strive to live in God's kingdom, as we strive to live up to the title that God has given us as saints, we are blessed. We are happy because we know the immeasurable and sometimes unexplainable love of God. We are blessed. We are God's saints, here and now, today. So we can't wait to feed the hungry or comfort the grieving, tend to the sick or the lonely or standing up for the vulnerable. We are God's children now. Blessed. Happy is a way of life. It's a way of life today and a way of life for all God's saints. Amen.